Now, for political detainee Keith Coleman is uh, testifying at the Neil Agate inquest today. Coleman was responsible for starting a community newspaper that reflected the struggle of black South Africans during apartheid. Now, this landed him on an apartheid police wanted list. And Riante Naidu is covering that story for us. And she joins me now to give us more clarity on what exactly happened today. Now, Riante, good to have you. Let's start with this. Why was Keith Coleman detained in the first place? Good day, Tomelo. Well, he was detained because essentially he was on a watch list, a security uh, branch officer's watch list. And that's because he was associated with people like Barbara Hogan and Orit van Heerden, who were anti-apartheid activists at the time. So um, he says he explained, you know, the beginning of how he got politically active. And while he was still in school, he was very aware of the political climate because he had an older brother who was at university and a student activist. So by the time he got to Wits University where he studied a BA um, he immediately became involved in these uh, political organizations and helped start a student newspaper that would reflect the real struggles of black people during apartheid because he says at the time a lot of they were there was media coverage of it but a lot of falsehoods were being reported on or being spread so this was a way to keep um, comrades in the loop unionists in the loop and and that is simply why they, they started up this newspaper. But obviously, you can imagine, this didn't sit well with apartheid police. And it was for that reason that he was being monitored. So, Rianta, then what kind of conditions was he subjected to while in custody? He says that they knew they, they, by publishing this newspaper they could be detained at any moment, but it was something they prepared for. And before being detained, he detailed how they would meet with their comrades and they would discuss how they would deal with interrogation and all of that. But the one thing he says he didn't quite prepare for was solitary confinement. So he went into a cell. It was dirty, as we've heard from many other detainees. It was small and there was just a hard bed and a dirty blanket with blood on it in the corner. He didn't have much. He says he cannot even describe the food they were given as breakfast. He didn't want it to make it sound as like, like as though he was being uh, staying in a hotel. He says it was just food. It was food to get you by. So terrible conditions. They would uh, eat in the morning, shower, and then be interrogated on that infamous 10th floor of the John Forster police station. And, and while he was detained, did he have much interaction at all with Neil Agate? And if so, what did he have to say about Agate? He actually did have uh, interactions with Neil Agate, and he says something that stands out for him was that Neil often told him he was struggling. So that was the word he used. And he says whenever they got a, you know, a, small, a small chance to talk with fellow detainees, they would always encourage each other to stay strong and mentally more than anything else. So he always encouraged Neil to stay strong, but he could see that Neil was struggling. And Neil told him he was being physically assaulted in, in his interrogation sessions and one day in particular that he says he'll never forget that struck him really hard was when he greeted Neil in the passageway and Neil didn't greet him back and he says it was then that he could see the effect of the assault on Neil that he couldn't even acknowledge or recognize other detainees he was just in an incredibly bad state all right well my colleague Riante Nandu thank you so much for that update of course coming from the Neil Agate inquest into his death